Hi everyone, welcome to my talk. This is Charlie Su, CTO and EVP of Andis Technology. Today, I would like to talk about Andis RISC-5 processor IP solutions. I give an overview of our processor lineup and focus on our new offerings. Andis Technology is a 15 years old pure play CPU IP public company with headquarters in Xinchu, Taiwan. We are a RISC-5 founding and premium member we are active in RISC-V International and also a major open source contributor and maintainer. Among the quick facts to update, Andis now has over 6 billion total shipment of Andis embedded SOC since Q3 this year. So where are Andis RISC-V processors used? Here are highlights of recent SOC announcement from our customers. First, Renesis ASSP MCU and also Telink IoT Wireless Audio SOC, and both are small but high volume chips. And PicoCam used 32 N25F to build their 5G small cell SOC. And we have a couple of customers using our vector processor and X27V to design their server grade AI accelerator. They choose and this V5 processor because of our configurability, capability of custom instruction, safety features, and strong integer and DSP performance, good development tools from Andis, as well as our partners such as IR, and strong LLVM support for AI compilers. Next, let's look at V5 processor lineup. On the left, we have application categories from bottom to top, embedded control with integrated FPU and data path processing with DSP or vector extensions and application processing with single core and multi-core and running Linux. On the bottom, we have processor families from 5 stage 257 series and 27 series to 8 stage superscalar 45 series. The core with X in the name are 64-bit, and the core without are 32-bit. On the bottom left corner, we have a tiny core, two-stage N22. The end solution for data-intensive computation lie in the DSP extension, vector extension, plus end custom extension, while other cores are used in control-intensive environment or a mixture of control and data processing. Today, I'm excited to announce the new member of Andis V5 family, A27L2, AX27L2, A45MP, AX45MP, and also the upgraded vector processor, NX27V. A27L2 and X27L2 from the name, we know that they indicate they are A27 and X27 plus an integrated L2 controller. They support Andy Star V5 base, just like all Andy cores, which has RV, GCN, and P extension, and MMU support plus SMO and V5 extensions. 25 series has a five-stage single-issue pipeline. It supports programmable PMP and PMA. And its members, uh, L1 cache, support write skipping, multiple outstanding transactions, and prefetch to deliver higher bandwidth and reduce latency for applications. 27L2's L2 cache controller uses 64-byte cache lines with size up to 2 megabyte, and 16 way set of shootivity with pseudo random replacement, and dual bank for tech and data RAM with bank interleavings. To accommodate different types of SRAM, their latencies are programmable. And it also supports MEM boost, and XI bus has both master and slave port, and it supports optional ECC error protections. Compared to X27, X27 L2 with a 512 kilobyte L2 cache can achieve 
2.1x memory bandwidth and only 30% memory latency and 1.9 spec inked 2000. Next, 45 series. Its base core M45 and NX45 support RVGCN and V5 extensions. On top of that, D45S P extension SIMD DSP support. A45, X45, and their MP counterparts include MMU as well. 45 series has an eight stage in order dual issue pipeline. An independent pair of instruction can be dual issued if at least one of them is an ALU instruction. The most dependent pairs of two ALU instruction can be dual issued too. And its late ALU allow dual issue uh, of a load and its dependent ALU instruction. And this can lead to zero cycle low use penalty. Other highlights of the 45 series pipeline include unlight, data access, supported by hardware, and low power dynamic branch prediction, and Memboo's memory subsystem. 45 series has full memory architecture support. For virtual memory, it has MMU and S mode, or page sizes, and virtual memory mapping. It has a shared TLB with up to 512 entries. For physical memory support, it has up to 16 en entry physical memory protection and physical memory attribute. And L1 IND caches have a size up to 64K with 64 byte lines and up to four way set associative. It, and it also supports cache locking mechanism to ensure real time performance. Parity and ECC error protection are optional. And for IMD local memory, their size can be up to 16 megabyte and with optional ECC protection. Next, 45MP. It's a cache coherent multi core. It supports directory based scheme for scalability and messy coherence protocol. Its coherence manager supports 1 to 4 A45 or AX45, an IO coherence port for cache list masters. Its optional L2 cache controller is similar to that of 27L2. And its bus interfaces include memory ports, MMIO ports, local memory slave port, and coherence slave port. And 45 MP complex pre-integrates a prick for global interact handling and debug module and trace tag support. And Linux SMP is already running. Next, let's look at 45 series performance. Using Comark as a reference, 45 series deliver over 5.5 Comarks per megahertz, a leading score among the same level of processors. And it's about 60% faster compared to the single issue 27 series. Factoring in the frequency advantage, 45 series deliver 70% higher total performance with less than 50% increase in logic area and power consumption. So it's a good trade-off for those who need higher performance. 45 series also deliver 35% higher memory bandwidth using memory copy. For those demanding much higher frequency at 12 nanometer, 45 series can run up to 2.4 gigahertz. So before we talk about NX27, let's take a quick look at Andy's solution for data pass acceleration. First, <coughs> we have RVP DSV CMD extension, which contain integer fixed point instruction operating on existing integer register. It's suitable for audio, voice, small image, and slow video. 
And then RVV vector extension with scalable vector registers targets high data rate computation, such as large image and fast video. <coughs> Last, on the NDIS custom extension framework, Copilot can take user input for instruction extension and automatically generate extended components for tools, ISS, and RTL. And in particular, it supports NDIS New Cycle Accurate Simulator for detailed performance analysis and Imperis Fast Simulator to enable early software development. NX27V, so it, it uh, was announced in the last summit and we got a few customers now. I will talk about more detail and its new features. NX27V consists of a scalar unit and this Innovative Vector Processing Unit, or VPU. The scalar unit is based on the core of 27 series with one distinct new feature, FP16 instruction, which allows it to work with VPU for the housekeeping AI task. In addition, it has even more aggressive memory subsystem to support vector load store, including multiple outstanding uncached Accesses. We have upgraded VPU to support the latest RVV spec 1.0. The white green line on the picture indicates the white low store data paths between units. That's from VPU to cache, VPU directly go to the bus for uncached access. And also streaming port, which you will talk about later. NX27V is upgraded to support ELAN64, so it covers RVV standard data format from INT8 to INT64 and FP16 to FP64. And it also supports NDIS extended format BFRO16 and INT4 to support diversified AI applications. NX27V has a powerful vector unit for computation speed up. Or RVV arithmetic instruction are executed there after retired from scalar pipeline. There are multiple functional units operating in parallel and out of order, and they are all trainable, and most are fully pipelined. VPU supports a wide range of VLAN and SIMD width combination from 128 to 512, although most customers like the largest configuration and use multiple of NX27V. VPU needs efficient load store to move data to and from vector register file. For this, it supports two independent memory paths. Besides the standard RVV vector load store instruction going through the Y data cache and bus unit, NX27V user can use an AC framework to design vector low store instruction through the streaming port. So what is the AC streaming port? It is to connect to an external hardware engine and smart memory. It contains a decoupled pair of a command channel and a data channel, both using simple handshaking protocol. The commands are issued by AC instruction and it can be very wide and include custom information. And as a, an example, a hardware engine can have application-specific DMA to move data to its smart memory and perform structure computation, such as CNN operation. And ACE instruction can be used to control hardware engine through the wide command channel and low store data through the wide data channel to and from vector register, as well as other NX27V registers. The code snippet here shows an example of defining a streaming port vector low instruction. The advantage of a streaming port is that hardware engine can be tightly coupled to the ultimate efficiency. And data accesses can be more efficient with additional semantics such as address auto-increment 
and wrapping around. Here are another powerful usage of ACE for NX27V. RVV is very powerful, but it doesn't and cannot satisfy everyone. So we extend ACE to make custom vector instruction possible. Here's the basic idea. You design the instruction with vector operands as input and or output using the field operands. And specify the input formats of whether they are single width, widening, narrowing, or quad scaling. Then you write CSIM and compact Verilog as the standard ACE way. With this, designer only need to focus on ELAN level instruction semantics. Taking the design files as inputs, compiler can automatically generate support for software tools, such as compiler, debugger, and simulator, and also automatically generate RTL for de decoding, formatting, dependent checking, chaining, and more. And those custom vector instruction behave according to RVV control register, such as ELMA, SEW, and BL. So they are RVV control aware and work well with the standard RVV instructions. NX27V enables a scalable acceleration architecture. At the lowest level, it can be greatly enhanced by ACE and tightly coupled to hardware engine to form a processing unit or PE for the basis of domain-specific acceleration. At a higher level, multiple PE array can be constructed as a cluster or multiple clusters and share some memory. Separately, the acceleration array can be accompanied with a control subsystem to run control and applications. Separating control from acceleration allows designer to optimize them independently. In the development software side, Andis is working on OpenCL to support such heterogeneous architecture. So if you are interested, we have another talk to cover OpenCL right after my talk. Lastly, I'd like to introduce Andis Sentry security framework we announced in this summit. And this entry is an open framework for a wide spectrum of threat mitigations. It covers from cyber attacks to physical attacks. And it is flexible in choosing a solution for robustness, cost, power, and other metrics. And it is scalable for use from MCU to multi-core. It is trustable because solutions are from Andis and our partners with certified solution and experience. And anti sentry scope includes T, crypto acceleration, and protection against cyber attacks, and countermeasure for physical attacks, and including both hardware and software. And with this, I conclude my talk. So Andis have six talks in this summit. So after my talk, uh, Sao Zhong will talk about OpenCL support for RISC-5 vector extension. And tomorrow, Dean Kai will talk about enhancing verification coverage for RISC-5 vector extension using RISC-5 DV. And Paul will talk about building a secure framework using the enhanced IOPMP. And Chuanghua will talk about Andis correctly a performance bottleneck analyzer for RISC-5 vector processors. And the day after, Tang will talk about RISC-5 vector extension demystified, which is a three-hour tutorial. So make sure you don't miss those. Thank you.